commodities. Buying and selling commodities. That's about 70% of all international trade. Commodities. What are they? Copper, crude oil, pork rinds, gold. Any class of goods assumed to be uniform in quality. One bit no different than any other bit. Pure, fungible stuff, convenient for buying and selling. No one noticed, but Switzerland has become the global leader in the trade of commodities. Swiss companies handle at least 25% of the world's commodities, and their share is rising. It happens in offices in Geneva or in Zug. Deals are done, ships chartered, commodities moved. And the stuff itself never enters Swiss territory. some of the most powerful and profitable companies in Switzerland and are crucial in contributing to today's global economy. Many have turnovers higher than banks, but only insiders know their names. The invisible. No one noticed as Switzerland became the world leader in the buying and selling of oil. Geneva. This city has overtaken London as the number one center for world trade in commodities. Vitol, Trafigura, Mercuria, Gunvor, Litasco, Bunge, Louis Dreyfus. These are the names. These are the main companies controlling the commodity trade in Geneva. Vitol, Trafigura, Mercuria, Gunvor, Litasco, Bunge, Louis Dreyfus. Heard of them? Not likely. Then there's Glencore Extrata, one of the world's largest commodity traders. Glencore Extrata is based in Bar, in the tax haven canton of Zug. come to Switzerland to enjoy the low corporate tax rates. Banks, of course, but also insurance companies specializing in financing trade. Switzerland claims to be a neutral country. It doesn't even abide by the boycotts and embargoes imposed by the UN. This kind of neutrality is a nice advantage in the competitive global economy. Most commodity traders work out of inconspicuous offices on the upper floors of office buildings. Sometimes these offices are not even marked by any conventional signs. Very discreet, very low key, the perfect veil for traders who prefer to avoid public attention and scrutiny. Visible invisibility. In Switzerland, the commodity traders act freely. Few laws constrain them. Elsewhere, some states are defending their citizens by using the power to tax. Venezuela, Bolivia, and Ecuador limit the loss of public wealth that shadows the extraction of commodities from their countries. Panic on the first-class deck. Half of all Zambian copper is exported to Switzerland. The invisible. 
Switzerland buys eight times more Zambian copper than China. Switzerland has become the largest copper importer in the world. The nation that can buy commands. The nation that must sell serves. Glencore Extrata, described by some as the world's largest commodity trader. Imported to Switzerland, just kidding, it's only on paper. The goods never really arrive there. What arrives in Switzerland are the profits. The money earned in the deal, that crosses the border. Zinc, let's say, zinc and copper. Glencore Extrata controls more than half the global market in those two commodities. Army move more stuff than Glencore Extrata. Freedom for business. Prisons for the victims of business. In 2011, some 70% of Glencore Extrata's production facilities were located in countries known for corruption. Welcome to Colombia, welcome to Equatorial Guinea, Kazakhstan, Congo. The global division of labor. Some states specialize in winning, others in losing. but not without harm. Copper's extracted and shipped away, but who's left with the damage? The locals and their environment. are dying for the world's cheap copper. The visible, organized plunder. Copper is mined, and acid in the ground fouls the drinking water of a thirsty city. Strata, taxes in Zambia are next to nothing. The greater the demand for a raw material, the greater the misery in the global south. Zambia is one of the poorest countries in the world. Industry, development, the wealth of the north, fruits of colonial times and of today. In Zambia, is the knife, and who is the assassin?
Mapani Copper Mines. Like other subsidiaries of companies, Mapani practices transfer pricing to avoid taxes. Operating costs, these can be inflated. Transfer pricing is how it's done. At the same time, the copper sold to the parent company is underpriced to evade taxes. Aggressive tax evasion in Zambia and elsewhere. This is how it's done. Welcome to the trading business. A state that puts all its eggs in one basket. That state soon becomes a failed state. Neo-colonial alchemy. Gold into scrap metal. Food. Commodities, vast quantities sold below the market rates. Priced for convenience and profit. Enriching political and economic elites in the countries of extraction and abroad. 9.3 billion US dollars. That's the stock share package earned by Glencore's CEO in 2011 alone. In Zambia, it would take the work of 6.2 million laborers to make that much in a year. Under current laws, headquarters cannot be held responsible for the crimes of its subsidiaries. The extractive industries are well protected. To bring a lawsuit against headquarters, that's as good as impossible. Copper is mined by subsidiaries. Damage is done. Damage is always done. In discreet offices in Switzerland, the profit is taken. have introduced measures to curb some of the most corrupt corporate practices, slowly giving them plenty of time to establish new ways to reduce the commons to a commodity. It's always the same in financial capitalism, in neoliberal capitalism, in Keynesian capitalism. Now, in the US, new laws are forcing oil and mining companies to disclose payments made to governments in countries in which they operate. The EU is about to do the same. Neutral Switzerland, however, has decided to do nothing. Switzerland will protect its lack of transparency and regulation. Switzerland is a refuge, not for refugees and immigrants, but for companies and their headquarters. The global south, rich in resources, but the vast majority of people stay poor. Swiss traders, well, they make billions. Switzerland is a partner in crime. Slavery and the commodity trade. As we look back on slavery today, so two decades from now, will we look on the commodity business and its profits? It could even be argued that slavery was more civilized. Slave owners at least had an interest in keeping their property alive. Today, corporations have no interest in anyone's survival. 
From the sites of damage, they will always move on. From their victims, they're protected. Misery is the basis of their profit. Time to change that. Rights for everyone. Rules for transnationals. Abolish this abuse, as slavery was abolished. Better to go for the entire cake. Expropriate them. La complainte est inutile, l'histoire est redondante Certains ont les parachutes dorés, d'autres les plafonds d'amiante Il y a les sorties d'usine, les mers corutilantes Certains ont les parachutes dorés, d'autres les plafonds d'amiante Les plafonds d'amiante La servitude n'est pas héréditaire Elle se travaille au fouet depuis des millénaires ils ont le choix entre le fric et le pouvoir On nous laisse celui de l'incendie ou du désespoir La servitude n'est pas héréditaire Elle se travaille au fouet depuis des millénaires Ils ont le choix entre le fric et le pouvoir On nous laisse celui de l'incendie ou du désespoir Yeah, yeah. 